Let's dive into the ETFs to see how the end of year is coming to a close. Hey everyone, Nick here. Doing some homework on Tuesday night, short week, end of year, and uh, coming into it with a bullish bias greatly helped by, if not established, by the Federal Reserve flip from hawkish to dovish, skipping the neutral stance. It gave everybody a lot of courage, so the price action is playing out to the upside. Uh, the default statement on all of these is almost all of them are in a rising wedge. If you look at it, it's a long rally that came in a short period of time that is continuing to set higher highs and higher lows. So the instinct is to fade it. Um, the danger is to short it without real good reason. In other words, I do see some reasons to short some things. For example, this particular ticker, which is the XLF. I'll start there. Um, you saw my write-up. If you remember, if not, become one. You will see it as a very gentle bearish setup using puts. Simple. And it's not because it's rallied so far. Because on the 15 minutes, I see a reason to. Something on the chart. So I'm not shorting and arguing with it. It's an idea based on a chart. Um, so if I have ideas that are bearish like that, that's fine. But if I'm shorting just because I disagree with it, the risk lies in me getting run over. Um, just like the opposite is also true. If I just chase everything blindly just because we're going up and it seems like we're not going to ever go down, um, I'm going to be caught late. Musical chairs, the music is going to stop, and maybe I'll find a chair, maybe I won't. So momentum traders know what they're doing. They buy high and sell higher. Investors that are chasing blindly, I think you're opening, I would be opening myself up to failure. So I would rather miss out if I know I cannot play at this level. But buying a few uh, setups based on calls or puts because of something on the chart, that's what we're trying to find. So let's jump in. And I already discussed this. The idea is it broke out from 35.7 right there. And the target is not yet met just from this breakout. It could be a lot more. And it also just overcame a big hurdle from the February failure earlier this year. But look, it's going to run into a whole bunch of peaks and valleys. So this giant mountain of potential buyers and sellers, uh, these are people stuck from a long time ago. April of 2022, that one candle right there on that one day. So if I ask these people, hey, how did it work out? They're going to be saying, I can't wait to get out. So maybe they're out already or looking to get out. So overhead supply is there. So the danger is overstaying your welcome or starting too late. Um, on a two hour chart, nothing new, higher lows, and maybe they're making another higher high. Uh, don't assume this is the double top, or triple top, or whatever you want to call it, until they show you how, at least make a lower low. So I'm going to put an alert right here to tell me when they lose, if they lose 36.80. All right, so that's a tactical comment right there. Will they lose 36.80, which looks like eons lower, uh, miles lower, before they take out 37.74? Um, so I'm going to raise this up to here. All right. So will they lose this support before they take out these resistances? That's the XLF. The XLE had been in a uh, downturn. It was being sold hard and they finally bounced. This green M on a daily basis is a harmonic, uh, which target one has been met. Target two is 89 right there. Target two is at 89. Um, in this environment, I won't bank on target two, but, um, you know, you should be aware that it's there. So in my opinion, they will try to buy dips into these two candles of 84 and 83 in order to curl back up and get to that target too. At least 87. This looks like a prior uh, failing level. So the XLE is mainly made up of two stocks, Chevron and Exxon. They're about 44% last time I checked of the whole index. So you should put that into the um, formula there. So if I zoom in a couple of hours, you can see let me zoom in some more. You can see how we have higher lows and arguably also higher highs, albeit pretty close. So I'm looking at these. This is a 30 minute chart, right? So these are uh, five 30 minute candles, all about the same top area. So 8620 is going to matter. Uh, again, will they lose 84 before they take out this easy layup? In football terms, they're on the goal line. All they have to do is fall forward and they'll score. The utilities is a different story because this guy. Um, has been hurt for a while by the Fed's uh, monetary action. 
utilities typically are um, dividend payers, right? And when the Fed was raising rates, the bonds were a serious competition to these dividend payers. Um, so I don't know how that plays into the Fed actions in the next couple, couple of months. So you have to know that it's sensitive to it. Now, looking at this chart, I can comment. This is a daily com a chart. Uh, this weird spike, that's probably the Fed. Fed effect was that on the 13th the Fed yes so this was the Fed the relief that makes sense but they couldn't hold it which tells me does the market not believe the Fed or do they know that the Fed didn't mean to come off so dovish so that's a big question mark right there um, the other thing is they are buying that we are in an ascending channel on this chart they're buying dips dip bought dip bought spike dip question mark as far as really be bought and now this catalyst that caused this gigantic mountain of sellers what will it take to take that candle out? It's going to take a miracle. When you lay a seller zone that big, what's this going to do when it comes back up to 64? I'm asking. So it does have support into 61 and 60.4, but it has a bunch of sellers. And if I look left past that, just to this area where, uh, say, back into March of this year and a couple times since then, it was here. I'll put a line. It was a prior support zone that has become maybe forward resistance. I call these pivot zones, and I do have one pivot zone. And it's not a hard line in the sand, although if I wanted to put one, they'll be right here at 64. And it's a zone. So what will they do at it? Shorter term, it looks pretty bearish. That's that same line. And it looks easier to lose this area of 62 before taking out any of these level so if this loses 62 it probably goes to that 60.4 cap down here that we saw earlier down inside this big candle here all right xhb home builders this one puzzles the hell out of me so i don't trade it i have so many questions <laughs> i don't get it let me take out my comments they're embarrassing uh, not because i don't know what i'm doing i don't get it i honestly don't get how real estate kept on rallying into exploding interest rates and i know for a fact that people in the commercial real estate are struggling, or at least I spoke to one person that I know knows what he's doing and he's struggling. So this is beyond me. Therefore, I don't participate. Technically, I can tell you why it's rallying. Once they broke out of 85 and 86, the upside target could have been as big as the bowl, this thing. So it has a lot more to go, even if we just consider half of this, uh, $15, right? At half of that. So $15 from the neckline, is somewhere around here the 100 so I said to myself as tempting as it is to short this thing I'm gonna let it run because I don't understand it and you should just take that comment as it is technically if they lose 93 they might end up at 88 and a half and they have such an easy catalyst from here to here all they have to do is just sneeze and they get to 100 let's see if they do it XLB I'll go to a daily to zoom out the material sector um, all right, so if I look left and I ask these people, what happened the last time you bought or you got long? They'll say, oh my gosh, I got, I got hammered, I got hammered. Well, maybe this time it's different. I would rather see them prove it, especially that they have another selling zone at 88. So 86, big fail three times, th two times. 88, big fails another four or five times. Not, a, not an obvious, how about this, an acronym called NOPE. It's not an obvious point of entry, NOPE not an obvious point of entry so just that would be that would be my comment here nope um i would let it go if i'm dying to get long oh boy all right let's see if we can get some catalyst here all right so i don't like it at all i don't have any reasons i'll tell you what if they get to 8640 maybe momentum trader can take it here and get a couple of dollars out of it otherwise this red w has some pull down to 85 so I would say this is available and maybe if this comes, maybe, whoops, maybe it can um, give you a little bit more to here is available. And this red W would be not good if they get to 86 and a half. So that would be my stop out. So if you're, if I'm a momentum trader, uh, I can chase the breakout. And conversely, if I'm trying to short it and I'm looking for this arrow, maybe this arrow too, I would consider stopping out above this arrow. Um, this looks pretty weak, so let's see if they get to it or not. Uh, XLC, the communications, is that what this is? Yes. Uh, one day, 
Breakout, this might be an all-time high. I lost track. No, it isn't, Nick. Come on. Well, if I look here on a weekly basis, it is a breakout. It is an inverse head and shoulders. It kind of looks like the S&P, which gives you 100 points, 104 S&P outside points. No joke. SPY, go watch the videos. It's an inverse head and shoulders. And the target, the measured move is 25 points on this guy. So it's off the charts, literally, right? Okay, but they have to deal with a few things. What about this candle right there? Look at it. Look at how it topped inside this doji right there and this cluster of real, really long tails. So, hmm, this zone is questionable for now. I think this is a resistance area. Let's see if I can come up with more lines for us. How? I'm going to switch over to different kinds of candles, Heiken Ashi candles. They're a little bit more honest about levels. Okay, so I see a box I want to draw around. this candle oh look at that i come up with the same zone i'm i was drawing around this candle from march of 2021 march 22nd 2021 the week of i don't know why it sticks out of the page to me and it, it includes all these tails all these tails and that big tail right there it almost matches up so i really like this candle really like it i'm gonna move it a little bit um so i don't start longs here but this is a short-term game as well on the two-hour chart, it's a slow short, just like the other one. That red W could play out target one and target. God, I can hardly see it. Target two, but it has to not exceed uh, seventy-three eighty. You can extend it to seventy-four. It's actually seventy-three eighty on a closing basis. So target one down to seventy-one fifty, maybe. If that plays out and they bounce, they could make a lower low and finish this to seventy and a half. But it has to not go above that. So that's tradable on a two-hour chart so it's not so fast but it is a tactical entry and exit XLK mm, so that would be Nvidia and company and such <sighs> tough to short these guys so their runaway rally point A to point B consolidated for quite a long time and they broke out of the consolidation I would not want to short this thing um, I can't go long and I can't go short with conviction so I end up either trading the short term uh, peaks and valleys or just staying out completely I would I usually when something like that happens and I'm interested I would um, set an alert at a place where I, I like it like how about down here I'll set an alert um, you know wake me up here gap below this might take months to come to fruition so what I missed it and if we come down to here I'll, I'll say something like long idiot <laughs> Those are notes to myself to have the courage because I'm pretty sure it will be on some gigantic red day and everybody will be running for the hills. Someone needs some courage. Um, all the help we can get. All right, so what is this here? XLI, the industrials. Okay, so this is a comment I made in the last couple of weeks. The problem I have with this rally, the industrials are rallying like we are in a growth spurt globally. Would that make sense? Okay, why would Caterpillar running so big, the industrials? It's because we grow, China's growing 15%. Well, it's not the case. The U.S. is growing just because we have money from the pandemic uh, stimulus still kicking in, one or two GDP. So why are the industrials rallying like we have? It doesn't matter why. They just broke out into new all-time highs. So how would I chase this? I can't. I can't chase it unless I'm a momentum trader, kind of like the XLK. I would want to buy the dip if it happens. Uh, where, which dip, depends on how fast I trade. So someone that's moderate in trading can buy the dip if even if it's just 7% or 5 to 10%, you could do that into these candles right there. But then it would be, I have to get out on a pop because I'm not guaranteed that it would come back um, to this level up here. The XLY, oh my gosh, similar. So same exact comments here. Let's see if I zoom out. Is that an all-time high? Not similar. I mean, not the same. Similar, short term, buy the dip. Um, I don't know if this is a confirmed breakout. So we had a weekly close and and we didn't have a retest. So the breakout from from 178, 177, 178 on a weekly basis, I would like to see a break, breakout, a retest, maybe lower than the neckline and then beating where they came down from. So I don't know if they came down. I wouldn't consider there was a retest. So it's breaking out. These candles are scary to go long into. So I'm not fast enough for the straight given my schedule currently. So if you are, good for you. Um, how about this? If you are fast, why not treat these as your short against or go long after the breakout? 
So I would either buy the dip into this large candle to curl back up. So if I'm optimistic about this and this happens this week, somewhere inside this zone, I would go long for this. But I would have to get a momentum thing, like some sort of a momentum study to do that. And um, the breakout is from this, or I could short against this and stop out if they take that out. Whichever side of the <laughs> argument you want to fall on. Okay, XLP, um, consumer staples. For a long time, these guys were not getting the respect. So if they tell us that the, cons the economy was slowing down, would you think that they would buy more of this stuff, less of the discretionary? The discretionary was rallying and not too long ago while this one was falling out of control. Like companies like Pepsi was falling like the sales are going to plummet if we had a recession. I don't know. The logic doesn't play out with me. Nevertheless, we have this whole zone that was support and then they lost it in this giant battle. And here they are inside that giant battle. Um, boy, it looks like that. Mad Magazine, but anyway. Oh, Nick, you're dating yourself. So we lost it big time and we're coming back into it. This should not be an easy takeover, takeout. So I wouldn't chase blindly here. Uh, 69.50 might be easier than 73.50. That fair? 69.50 is easier than 73.50. In fact, 68 is easier than 74. See if you can put that comment to work a huge failure at 7260 so you might want to put a line there just a visual reminder as to the bumpers we're playing with and as far as support higher lows so the supports are scattered every peak every poke down every one of these sticks is a uh, technically support this is a weird overnight poke right here out of nowhere without a corresponding tick plus or minus two days so what was that all about you can even put a candle right there whoops you can put another one down here. It's like, what happened there? Looks like I have an alert there. All right, XLV. Um, this is shortable on a two-hour chart with stops. On a two-hour chart, this could do something like this. Pop down here, another follow-through down here. Um, but you must stay below 137, 138. I'm going to move it up a little bit. So if I buy a put here and they get up to here on a closing basis, I would consider exiting out of the put if I haven't been stopped out by money lost. So put a pain tolerance thing here. All right, so let me zoom out to one day and see if I can see anything. All right, so multiple failures up at these levels with varying degrees, right? These are hard failures. The last three, four times we were here, hard fails with one poke up here. All right, XBI are probably going to look similar. Um, this is a biotech. The other one was a healthcare. Um, I can't remember which one. I think this one is made up a whole bunch of small ones. The other one is made up of several big ones. Um, you know, double check just to know what you're trading. Lower highs, huge rally into prior major fails. Doesn't inspire confidence for me. Um, momentum traders might be able to trade it short term. For me, I would let it go or try to. I would definitely exit. I would not start new. If I do start new, I would not start big. I would leave room to add. All right, so we did all of these. I don't know if I'm missing any uh, ETFs. If I am, reach out in a comment. Would love to know what you think of the content. And if you'd like to see more and what other tickers am I missing, we will add them. We can also discuss in the comment. Just keep it clean. Family show. Peace out.